Hey you all, welcome back. So today I really wanted to do a video for you about a specific particular product. This is the Danessa Myricks Color Fix in the shade Olive U. Now if this is your first time to my channel, you may not know that I had a video do really well about how to identify whether you have an olive skin tone. I will link that for you. Basically, I have an olive skin tone. I'm a makeup artist. Some of you might need this product in your life. I'm going to explain and then do a demonstration of some of the ways I might use this on a face. So let's get into it. So if you're not familiar with the Danessa Myricks Color Fix, these are basically liquid pigments that can be used on the eyes, lips, and face. You can use them as mascaras, you can use them as eyeshadow bases, you can use them as standalone eyeshadows, although I will say on some clients I've seen them crease if I don't set them with powder shadow, so I usually use them as bases. Um, but I also like to really use them as mixers and contours as well. The coverage on these is pretty good. You need to work really quickly, as you'll see in the demo, to blend them because they do set down. So why do I like this shade in particular? So this shade in particular, as you may have guessed, has an olive undertone. I will show you some footage of me swatching it now. As you can see, it's like not quite a green, but it's a brownish greenish olive color. It's definitely still in the neutral family. It's not like a very strong green. It's still kind of in that skin tone realm, which is Something that really intrigued me about this product and made me really want to try it because I already knew I loved the Danessa Myricks Color Fix products, particularly the Color Fix nudes, to do like very artistic things on people's faces. Like I like using them to sculpt the face and sculpt the eye. If you do blend them out quickly enough, they do blend out really well and they do grab onto powders really well without being sticky. So they're just like a fantastic product to have in your professional kit. But also they do sell them at Sephora, so I would imagine that they are are also intended for personal use, uh, which they can take a little bit of getting used to. Definitely like less is more, start with less. But if you have an olive skin tone and you're looking for something that could be like a nice liquid contour and possibly eyeshadow, I think this would be great. As a contour, like on its own, like not mixed with anything, this is very dark for me, but I could see this looking really really beautiful on some like medium to dark olive skin tones like as is you know so that's number one it's great for contouring and just having something neutral but like still flattering and in that same undertone for olive skin tone specifically however i do have another use for this in my professional makeup artist life and actually i used it this past weekend on a bride who is very very uh, light complected and has a yellow undertone. She's very golden, her hair is like an orangey color, she was using a lot of gold accessories, we did gold sparkly eyeshadow. It can be really difficult working on very very pale skin that is also yellow because typically very very pale skin has a lot of redness present in their surface tones. So if you know anything about basic color theory, or if you don't I'll tell you, red is the opposite of green, they are complementary colors so in order to neutralize colors you typically want to go in with its complement so the complement of red is green so having something that's neutral with a green undertone that works on a lot of skin tones as a contour I think you're seeing where I'm going with this I used this as the contour on that bride and it came out fantastic because the green in here neutralized some of the redness and because green does have warmth to it it still kind of cohered with her undertone so when I talk about undertones and surface tones, usually the rule of thumb is you want to cohere with your undertone and minimize or neutralize the surface tone. She wanted to neutralize her redness. So green kind of worked in that scenario, you know? So I basically did like an under contour, which is what you'll see in the demo with this olive U color. And then I uh, concealed on her and then I basically uh, just toned everything out with like a yellow toned foundation. 
I know that sounds a little bit complex. I don't know if like the average person watching me is a makeup artist or like a regular makeup consumer, but I hope that does make sense. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. So to recap, these are liquid products that I use all over the face. I've used them for the lips, although I wouldn't necessarily use this one for the lips. I mainly use them as contour and eyeshadow colors. And this one is fabulous for my own personal use as an olive skinned person and also in my professional makeup kit where I might be dealing with other olive skin folks or somebody who has a lot of redness that needs to be neutralized. And in every single step of the makeup application, I am not only thinking about, okay, this is darker than their skin, so it's gonna be a contour, but I'm also thinking how is this step going to help in the overall neutralization of tones that I don't want in my makeup application. So working and layering with Color, correct color correction, that's what I'm trying to talk about. This is in a way a contour and a color corrector in one for somebody who has a lot of redness. So without any further ado, let's jump into the demo. I hope that explanation made sense. Um, stay tuned. So because I am gonna be using this product as sort of a contour, I wanted to compare its color to a bronzer I typically use as a contour, which is this Bare Minerals one. I'll have the name listed down below. But as you can see, way more green, darker obviously, but in tone, it's just way more green. So I just wanted to show you that. I'm going ahead and picking up just a tiny bit of the color fix on a Real Techniques setting brush and I'm starting off with my cream contour in a way that you normally would. And also I wanted to show you, it dries really quickly. So sometimes it can get patchy if you don't blend quickly enough. So here you can see me just adding a little bit more until I'm happy. I like to experiment with different shapes on my face. So I am giving myself a little bit more of a square shape today. Uh, just something to note, I don't always do that. So now I'm going ahead and contouring my forehead. I like to extend from the crease of the eye and connect it to my forehead contour. And this is a wonderful product to do that with. Like I said, I do use this to do more artistic eyeshadow and contour. So this is an example of how I will do that. And just FYI, I already have a thin layer of foundation on. Sometimes I, I go ahead and put them on bare skin. I just have like a little bit of uh, breakouts that I wanted to cover up first, essentially. So now I'm going ahead and doing my chin contour. I like to give myself like kind of a cute <laughs> pointier chin and then kind of connecting that to the jawline. Um, I also contoured underneath the lips a little bit. And I'm just using the same Real Techniques setting brush for this, picking up very little product at a time. Uh, now I'm contouring the nose. You could go in with a more precise brush, but I'm going to conceal after this and kind of clean up all of the lines on my face anyways, so I don't super feel the need to do that. Uh, but I am connecting my nose contour to my eye crease a little bit. Same, kind of the same way I connected my eye crease to my temple contour. Now I'm taking a small fluffy brush that's pinched at the ferrule. This is from my Kitco. I'll have the brushes listed down below. Uh, and I'm using this to further define my eye crease with more of the Olive U color fix. And I know my face looks a little bit muddy right now. Uh, this is not the last step. I am going to blend and conceal over this with a shade that's closer to my skin tone. But I'm just giving myself lots of definition before I do that step. So as you can see, I'm using this product to really create lines and shapes on the face to give myself a more sculpted look. So this is something that typically I'll do for a photo shoot or on a bride or marrier. I won't do this makeup if I, you know, only have 30 or 40 minutes to get them out the door. This is a little bit more time consuming, a little bit more artistic, and also like something that I would need to charge a little bit more for. So typically it's built into the price for, you know, like a bride's makeup versus a bridesmaid, let's say, just for example. Now I'm taking an eyeshadow that's close to my skin tone. This is the Wet n Wild Single in Brulee. And I'm just taking, you could just take any old eyeshadow brush, honestly, and just pat this all over the lid. 
Um, the fact that this is like a blending brush means that I can kind of blend it into my crease because as I said, the color fixes can tend to crease when they're not set with the powder. So I'm just kind of sweeping a little bit of that into the crease for like setting and finishing purposes. Now I'm gonna go in with my brightening concealer. This Milani Conceal and Perfect is just what I'm really liking right now. You can use anything that's a little bit lighter than your own skin tone. And I put a little bit of that in my inner corners where I wanna brighten up under the eyes. Now I'm using my foundation that is a perfect match for me. This is the Revlon in the shade 150. And I'm basically putting that between the contour and highlight zones. Again, I know this is like a little bit complicated, um, but this is like high level artistry, sculpting, all of that stuff. And while it can look a little bit funny in the beginning, I just love the way it comes together at the end. This is a My Kitco My Perfect Powder Brush, but I'm using the synthetic version, so it actually works really well with creams. I actually don't love this brush with powders, to be honest. I saw Danessa Myricks using this brush a lot on her Instagram, so that's what motivated, motivated me to try it uh, for foundation. And I do really like it for blending foundation in small areas. So as you can see, it's starting to look really nice, blended, glowy. Um, and I did let the under eye concealer dry just a little bit so I could get more of the pigment out of it. That's like a little trick that you can do to get more coverage. Um, and I'm just using that same brush to spread it out and also kind of carve out my nose contour a little bit and clean up the eye and temple contour as well by bringing that lighter color out to like the top of my cheekbones. And then I'm taking this small brush that I wiped off after doing my powder eyeshadow and just using that to blend the small areas like the inner corner. Now I'm taking that small pinched brush again with a little bit more of the Olive You Color Fix and I'm using that to deepen the outer corner. I think once you have a perfect contour color for yourself, you can use it to contour any part of the face, including the eyes. And I just love how this is turning out so far. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and speed through the rest of my makeup application. All of the products I use in this portion will be listed down below, but because they're not the purpose of this video, I'm not gonna really explain the rest of it. Um, so just sit back, relax, enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my videos as they come out. And be sure to also let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next, whether it be makeup or skincare related. I do own a skincare studio as well. So that's definitely my other passion that I'd be happy to talk about more. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you think you'll pick up this product and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.